Welcome to Empowering Lives with Purpose, and I'm your host, Kimberly Hobbs, and I am the founder of Women World Leaders. We are so grateful to have you here today, ladies, and I'm just thrilled to talk with our guest today, Miss Mrs. Sheila Irwin. Hey, well, thank you. <laughs> it's great to be here. Well, it's great to have you. Ladies, you're going to hear about this woman and who she is. Um, I'm really excited about today's podcast. We're going to be talking to moms and grandmothers. Um, Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way they should go. Mm -hmm. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. We're going to talk more about that and her two special uh, boys that she raised up. So today, ladies podcast is for you. We're here to inspire you, encourage you to walk after Jesus, to run after Jesus Mm. with all of your heart. And if we could be there to put smiles on your faces while doing it, we want to do that. Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's masterpiece. We are created anew in Christ Jesus to do the very good things that he planned for us long ago. And we believe that you have a beautiful purpose, ladies. And if you are moms and grandmothers today, um, just be prepared to be blessed to hear from this special woman of God. We are just so honored to have her. Sheila Irwin, who is she? Well, she's from Alabama and Sheila is passionate about pointing other women to Jesus, especially moms and grandmothers. And she served in the women, women's ministry as a director. She speaks at retreats and she leads Bible study groups across the country. Sheila manages a successful travel company, but her greatest joy is being a wife, a mother, a mother-in-law and grandmother. And that's so beautiful to hear that you cherish that Sheila. Sheila is the mother to well-known filmmakers, Andy and John Irwin of the Irwin Brothers and Kingdom Story Company. You may know of some of their movies, like uh, I Can Only Imagine and Mom's Night Out. Uh, Sheila Irwin is also the author of the book, Raising Up Dreamers, Find and Grow Your Children's God-Given Talents. We'll talk about that later and how you can get her book. She heads up a women's ministry, which is called Raising Dreamer Ministry at www.raisingdreamersministry.org. And today we get to hear more from her about being a mom and a grandmother and raising up these children. But God, ladies, right? How do we raise children in today's society? But God, So again, I shared that scripture starting out of Proverbs 22, six, that says train up a child in the way they should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. The Bible is so full of truths, especially in Proverbs and training up children is so important. Sheila, you raised up two very special boys who have become world changers in what they do, but they had to begin somewhere and they had to be taught, right? So parenting is such an important tool. Ladies at home, you know that. And if you have children running around, how important it is to teach and train them instead of leaving them to their own. You say in your book, Sheila, that the pressure doesn't need to be on us, though. We need to follow the leading of the Lord. So how did you raise two boys um, to be dreamers in their reach and give us a glimpse of life inside the Irwin household? Uh, well, to start with, my husband is a dreamer. Uh, he's been <laughs> in radio and television for a long, long time, had a talk show for many, many years, over 25 years, um, and, and then was a state senator for eight years. But 
Um, so he started, he was just, he was the dreamer in the household. Mm-hmm. I'm the creative one. I was an art major. Uh, and so that combination, I guess, was kind of good for our boys as well. But uh, to know our family, uh, we followed hard after God as a family. Mm-hmm. Uh, we taught our children that Jesus Christ uh, could be their all in all, that he could do anything. And yeah. that, um, and so when they were 12 and 16, uh, they came to their daddy uh, and they said, Dad, we really believe that God wants us to make Christian movies. Mm. And Hank did not discourage that at all. Uh, he said, well, that's great, guys. Uh, but there's some things you need to know. The first thing is it's going to take 20 years to build a company where you can really make good movies. So, you know, you got some time. Uh, the other thing is, um, is you're going to have to do the wow factor. If somebody looks at your work and they say, mm, that's good. You say, I'm not done yet. <laughs> <laughs> and you go back to the drawing board and you work and work until they look at your work and go, wow, you're doing everything with excellence. And Amen. so at that point, our boys um, were already, uh, Hank was already letting them be, I had a live TV show by that time. And they were, he was allowing them to, um, to run a camera, each one of them running one of the cameras at 12 and 16, they were running a camera. And then they started working around the studio there, um, doing some football games and working in this, in the, they just kind of like ducks to water. We just, they, it was just there. We homeschooled. So they had plenty of time to pursue this. And plus they're four years apart and they had time to develop their relationship. I don't think there would be an Irwin brothers if it had not been for the fact that we did homeschool uh, and they had time to develop those relationships and those things. And so, um, uh, so that was kind of, uh, what our home looked like. I, uh, I homeschooled them. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, so uh, I was having input that way as well. We homeschooled our John, uh, is ADD. Um, and so home, he says homeschool and saved his life, wow. uh, in school and, and, uh, he was doing okay. Uh, he wasn't doing mm-hmm. poorly, uh, by any stretch of the imagination is extremely high. Q, both of my boys do. Um, but uh, he was really struggling in the classroom. So after we came home to homeschool, he went actually in second grade from reading. He was reading second grade, fifth month, which is on, you know, that's okay. It's average. Um, but by the end of the second grade, just by homeschooling, he's then reading eighth grade, eighth month. He just needed the stability of being where there weren't a lot of people and a lot of things going on so he could really learn. So we didn't, we had our challenges that way. Um, mm. but they began to create and, uh, slowly, but surely Andy went off to, to, um, um, Bible college. And while he was gone, John turned his room into a studio. Hank bought him his own camera. He had another homeschool guy that worked for, uh, free, or at least John said it was for, for free. He ate me out of house and home. Uh, and they began to do commercials and missionary videos and just learning the craft learning what to do and how to do it. Mm. And slowly but surely uh, it came time where John uh, asked Andy if he wanted to come home and join him. And he did. He came home and joined. That's quite a story there. You can read that in the book, but he came home and joined his brother. They started doing, uh, they started doing um, um, music videos by that time. Uh, Michael W. Mm -hmm. Smith gave them their big break. He asked him to do a video for him. And after that, it was just smooth sailing as far as others asking them to do it. And then their big break came when uh, uh, Casting Crowns asked them to do um, their video and they won their first Dove Award. Uh, They won many Dove Awards after that time for Best Video of the Year. Uh, and then eventually made their first movie, which was October Baby. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. Wow. But mainly we followed after God. We did not set out to make movie makers. That was right. not our dream. And it wasn't our dream in the first place. It was their dream. Amen. And so we supported them in that and told them, wow. but God could do anything. But he can. That's right. He did. <laughs> yes. Amen. Amen. So that's, that's so interesting how you are sharing that you saw a need in, in one of your children to <clears throat> hone in because he had that, what they label as ADD, but 
through homeschooling, you said you were able to really uh, nurture him in that mm -hmm. area so that he could pay attention. And I love that, that you were very in tune to what was going on within his person. So let's narrow this down a little bit and talk about cultivating their gifts, your, their specific gifts, Sheila. And so what did that look like when they were really young? How did you cultivate them? You had to have little indications of what they were moving to. Um, and I'm sure you wanted them to follow after God while they were young. How did you cultivate the gifts that they had as uh, human beings? Uh, my boys wrote the foreword to my book, okay? Uh, Andy wrote about uh, something that happened in our home uh, that, that I was just doing for fun. Like I said, I'm an art major. So uh, I was just doing for fun, but it changed the trajectory of his life. Um, but um, they love Star Wars. <laughs> and the Christmas before we had been able, even though we were in the ministry, God had provided Star Wars stuff for 80% off. So we bought everything they had. Uh, and so the boys had all the Star Wars things. Uh, and I decided it would be fun because we had a garage we couldn't use because our driveway was straight down. I mean, straight down. And so we, we didn't really, you know, go up and down that driveway very much. So we didn't use the garage except for storage. And um, and so I thought, wouldn't it be fun to make a set of Star Wars? So we also I got saw horses and I got plywood and we went out there and we we started working. I think it was an old ping pong table, maybe. Even, uh, but anyway, we started working on it. I started working on it. And then the boys joined in and we made a Star Wars set. And and Andrew said that that changed his life uh, because really? it was his first uh, first adventure. He was he was six years old. His first adventure into telling stories and he would play out the, he and John would play out there forever and changing the characters around and telling stories together. And he said that, and I said, well, what was so special about that? As an adult, I asked him that. And he said, you entered into my world. Mm. Uh, I think sometimes we don't do that, or maybe we have a dream <laughs> and we want a doctor or a lawyer or an Indian chief, whatever it is that you want. And we set out to develop that. I didn't do that. I set out to know my children and to help them be who they were and who they mm -hmm. are. Uh, and they're totally different, totally, totally different. Um, and so I helped to help them learn and to nurture that. Another story would be with John. Uh, he was about three or four, maybe four, I don't know. Uh, and um, I w had somebody over. And so I, I said, um, I need to get John busy because it's not good if John's not, John's not busy while we're talking. So I went and I got a shoebox and some all kinds of just art supplies. And I put him over in the corner and said, make me something, make me something. Well, about an hour later, he comes back with a robot that that these arms and legs go up and down, you know, not bad oh, for wow. a five year old. Uh, but that was in his own creativity. I gave them the tools to be able to cultivate and the time I gave them time to be able to cultivate that thing that they loved and to nurture that as that as we went along. I didn't set out to conform them to the image I thought they ought to be. I set out to discover mm -hmm. them. I think wow. we make mistakes as moms doing that. To discover my children was just so amazing to me because they had such incredible things going on in their, mm -hmm. their little brains that if we take the time, we can, it's transformative. Amen. Wow. That is just, that's powerful because again, you know, we can be selfish as parents because, you know, we want to be proud of these kids and then everybody <laughs> gravitates toward their, you know, dream job or something and they point their kids, but that's necess not necessarily the gifts that God has given them. We need to look ladies for those special gifts that God has planted in your child and your grandchildren and hone in on those. And just like, um, Sheila said, you know, she got into their world. What made them happy? Where were they excelling? And then she developed with them where they were doing their best thing because we can push our agenda on them, but they're not necessarily going to be happy children when they're not comfortable in that agenda. 
But when we can get into their world and what makes them happy, then we're going to be able to have their ear as we go through their life with them, because we know they're in their happy place. They know that they're comfortable with mom because she's moving with them and she gets it what makes them happy. So really be a good listener to your child and ask God to show you what those gifts are in your children. And that's beautiful. That was great advice. Thank you. Sheila. Uh, let me tell you one more little story. Uh, this sure. is my grandson. Cause you mentioned grandsons. I have seven grandchildren. They're the most amazing people. <laughs> on the this earth. But anyway, and uh, of course they my, are, uh, of course they are. That's why they call them grand. Uh, but, um, our, my Isaac, he's 13, almost 14 right now. But when he was about six or seven, I was writing my book. I was starting to write my book and he knew Mimi was a writer. And, and so he came to, he came to me and, and he said, um, Mimi, I want to write a book and I've written a book. I said, you have? He said, yes, ma'am. He said, can I bring it and show it to you? So he had taken animals. He's very creative as well. He'd, he'd taken animals and he'd told something, had a picture of that animal, told something about those animals. And I said, let's put it into a book form. So I had a, a, an app. We put it into a book form. I edited it down. I got it all ready. Uh, I sent it to the person that could, I got, a per, I had a person that could make it into a book. Um, I had, I think it was 10 copies made. They were probably $20 a piece. I don't know. It was ridiculous. Wow. But but he got he had one for all, all the grandparents and the parents and he actually took one to his school and he took it to his teacher and she they put it in the library at the school. Oh my goodness! So wow, he has a wow. library. He has a book in the library at the school and he's a published author. <laughs> And I, I think you right. that, <laughs> that is that, so yeah. beautiful. I love it. I love it. Oh my goodness. And those are just like you, you had to share that because those are those proud memories, those moments that you know that you invested well, right? Yes. Like you can still say to this day that that memory of investing into the happiness of your child by cultivating those gifts. And you Absolutely. did so well with that, Sheila. So I want to share a scripture. Um, right now, Isaiah 8, 15, which says many will stumble over the stone and the rock and will fall and be seriously injured and be ensnared and captured. Today's world, we know it's easy to get ensnared and the enemy is all about his schemes, ladies, right? For our children. He wants our kids. He is after our children and it's a scary thing. So Sheila, how did you guide your children to chase those God-given dreams and channel their talents to glorify God and not be gripped by the world, not feel like they were doing things to impress the world? How did you bring them back to channel those gifts and do it for God? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Uh, that is a, that's a fantastic question. Uh, a lifetime. It takes the lifetime of the child. Uh, I mean, you know, you start very young. You don't start at 13 or 16 to try to do those things you're talking about. Right. You know, um, I, I always tell moms, your battle with your child is not one at 16, it's one at two. Uh, and so uh, realizing that and, and cultivating, uh, you know, those things. But we cultivated our home. Uh, and what I mean by that, our, our house was the fun house. Hmm. Uh, everybody knew the Irwins were strict. <laughs> and if you went over to their house, you had to obey their rules. Uh, you know, we were fortunate That's enough to good. have a swimming pool. So we were the place everybody wanted to be. But, but we cultivated our home and we brought children into our home more than our children went out into other homes. Okay. Hmm. Uh, there were very few homes they were allowed to actually go out into. Uh, but we would bring the children into our home and we would, you know, uh, our neighborhood children have actually been known to knock on the door and say, can, can Mr. Irwin come out and play? Uh, you know, and so that's my husband, Mr. Irwin, uh -huh. came out and play. Uh, or Mr. Hank was what they would call him. Um, and so we cultivated a, a, a home of joy and fun and activity mm -hmm. and all those things. Uh, we did a lot of things together as families. We did other, other families. And so we cultivated that where they, they really had a refuge. Your wow. children need for home to be the safest place on the face of this earth. That they know that. that the world's going crazy. And but mom and dad are going to give me a safe refuge. And because peer pressure is the most damning 
<laughs> thing on the face of this earth. A peer dependency is what it is nowadays. And mm-hmm. so, okay, so we used the book of Daniel. One of the things I taught my boys was the book of Daniel. Um, and in the book of Daniel, we see that, that some young men from Israel were taken captive. Uh, these were the cream of the crop, the best of the best. They were the princes of Egypt, uh, princes of Israel. They were, they were uh, the smartest, the most handsome. They were, you know, they were good looking. They were accomplished, all of it, all of it. And out of that group, there were four young men that would stand alone. And then there was one, and his name was Daniel. Um, mm-hmm. And so we teach our boys, that we taught our boys that we are to set the standard, not be pulled by the standard. Oh, we need wow. in the group, we need to be that one, that Daniel, dare to be a Daniel. Um, mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, so that helped our boys to know, you know, we talked to them about peer pressure. We talked to them about what to do. We talked to the fact that they get in a, a, a sticky wicket that they can call and we'll come get them right away. No condemnation and no judgment. We'll get them and bring them home. Um, you know, so we were there for them. I think there for them would be the thing. Uh, I know you mm-hmm. think you've got all these years and years and years that you're going to be a parent. It's hard and, you know, all this kind of stuff. But I'm going to tell you something. It goes by in a heartbeat. It does. The enemy does does want our children. Now, my children went into a very, uh, they worked for ESPN for a long time. They were the top two cameramen. They traveled all over the, that was their paying job while they developed their, their movie studios. And, um, and, and as, as my boy said, you know, um, the the movie crew are they're all pirates (laughs) Mm -hmm. and my boys love those guys and they love them but at night when everybody would maybe go to the bar the boys stayed you know in their hotel room together you know alone uh there were things that they had to do to stand alone but you teach them to stand alone they teach them that that jesus christ really will stand with them they don't stand alone alone um but there are things that you have to, you know, you just have to teach them those things. I, I think a lot of parents think their kids are just going to get it. Right. Somehow, I don't right. know where they think they're going to they get it. Just gonna... They don't, they don't take time to teach and to talk and to, uh, it's such a joy to watch my boys now with their own children and, and uh, listening to them instruct and in teach. And especially now, you know, they, they both have a teenager, uh, almost 14 years old, both of uh, John has a girl and Andy has a boy and watching them cultivate those relationships has been a joy as well. So oh, um, it's, it's, it's that thing that you're going to let them know that they are going to struggle at times, but you're there for them. Amen. Amen. And I love that. I love that you taught out of the book of Daniel and the Bible and, um, and you taught them to stand alone. And I just remember a, a song that I was taught as a young child. Um, and it was dare to be a Daniel, dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose, truth Mm. there to make it known. So that, that you teach them in standing alone, they're standing alone for a purpose. They have a truth, a truth that they need to hold on to tightly yes. and make that truth known of why they're being alone. And, and you parents are the ones that need to pour into your child to teach them that, to have that confidence that they can stand alone because they're standing on truth, not what the world is trying to, to um, trap them in, right? So we want to I, I love that you brought up Daniel. That's so cool. And see how God just brings those things to mind when they're instilled in you as a child. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Amen. So in closing, dear Sheila, um, it's not always easy to raise our children with circumstances in this world that have worn us down and we need an attitude adjustment sometimes. And when those attitude adjustments need to be made, they're not just for our children, right? They're for ourselves because things happen in raising our children. We can get really just pulling our hair out sometimes and our (laughs) attitude can turn sour really quick. But the Bible tells us be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord God is with you. That's first Chronicles 28, uh, 20. God will never fail you or forsake you as a mom. And Sheila knows that. 
but God, she said, I said, Sheila, what's a good title for this? And she's like, how about, but God? And I said, yeah. <laughs> so, but God, when you, he's never going to leave you alone. So God will see to it that all the work is finished correctly. All his work that he started is finished correctly. So again, remember that verse, first Chronicles 28, 20, ladies, you can go back to that. Sheila, as we're closing out, please weigh into that scripture of how God never leaves us alone during the difficult moments, and especially your difficult moments of raising two dreamers, because I'm sure there were plenty of those. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, somebody asked me uh, one time, would you have done anything different? I said, oh, only two things. And they said, only two. And I said, yeah, uh, I would have been the perfect mother and they would have been the perfect children. And that didn't happen. <laughs> oh, okay. uh, and so there's no such thing. There's only one perfect, perfect person. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. But when my when my Andy was about nine months old, I remember he was sleeping in the crib and and i had i i'm an only child uh i had been a i had been a principal of school but i had never had little children i mean around except for an, uh, a cousin that lived next door and i i kind of half raised her um but um i, I remember going to the lord that day and because i heard my mentor did say that she'd done the same thing but as i looked at him laying in the crib i said lord would you protect my child from my flesh Ooh. would you parent my child through me? I make available to you my mouth, my ears, my eyes, my heart, my hands, my feet. You parent. And he had been faithful to that cry of that little 29, almost 30-year-old woman. Oh, my goodness. Can you uh, repeat that, those again, Sheila? Those are beautiful. Wow. Well, I, I, I just I said, would you protect these babies from my flesh? Yes. You know, uh, wow. the first thing. Uh, and then the second thing was, would you parent my child through me? And here's mm -hmm. my here's my mouth, my hands, my eyes, my heart, uh, my feet, everything. I give it on ears. I give it all to you and you show me what to do. And he has been faithful. I'm teaching the book of James right now. And, uh, you know, and, and, it, uh, you know, it says, let him who a lacks wisdom ask and he gives it. Amen. It, James 1 5. Woohoo. Yes, he gives it, he gives it in abundance, but he also gives it yes. without reproach. He Amen. doesn't say, do you not know that yet? I can't believe you're asking me that. No, it's without reproach. So he will, he is always ever there for us. And remembering this, God didn't give you the wrong children That's and right. he didn't give them the wrong mother. Amen. either. Amen. Uh, and so uh, I, I think sometimes we, we begin to feel like, you know, we're not doing it right. Satan loves to whisper that in our ear, doesn't he? Uh, uh, and if I just had children like that lady over there, look at her children, uh, you know, then I could do whatever. But he's asked you to parent the ones he's given you. Um, and he will teach you. I think parenting is probably the biggest sanctification tool <laughs> that God has in his arsenal for we moms and dads too, but uh, he use it to, uses it to sanctify us. Then sanctify means to make us holy and it's progressive. And he's doing that as he's teaching us what real love looks like, what real sacrifice looks like, what going the extra mile looks like, what whatever that thing is that you need for that moment. He is ever, ever there and ever teaching us those wonderful truths that we're going to need, not only for our children, but for our own lives as well. And so seeing this process of parenting as God's tool for sanctification for me, and at the same time, hopefully the children are being sanctified as well. Um, but God never leaves us nor forsakes us. He's always, always there for us. And he's always available to us. If we if we've come to Christ, if we've understood the sin payment, if we've understood that we're sinners, and this is Easter weekend, we're going to Easter. Uh, if we've understood that He died on the cross and it was raised from the grave, and we accept that sin payment as mm -hmm. our very own, the Holy Spirit comes in to dwell in us mm -hmm. permanently, and He'll never leave you nor forsake you. And He's the instructor. He's our counselor. He's our teacher. And he's ever, everything that we need for godliness and holiness. 
And he's everything we need to be godly moms and godly grandmothers as well. Amen. Amen. That is so beautiful and how just beautiful advice to these ladies and grandmothers, moms and grandmothers alike. And Sheila, I just can't thank you enough. And, and just how beautiful the way you said it. I just, that's why I asked you to repeat it about <laughs> praying to God and not allowing our flesh to get in the way as moms mm-hmm. and grandmothers. What a prayer. I know I will be praying that especially. And, um, I love that prayer. So, and, and go through all of your, all of your senses, like Sheila did pray over them specifically because some of us, you know, can let our mouths get in the way. Some of us (laughs) can let our tempers flare up and our extremities get in the way. You know, we have to be very careful. So it's important to pray for our flesh in all from head to toe. I love, love, love that, Sheila. Thank you. Thank you. You have been a treasure to have on this Empowering Lives with Purpose podcast. I am so grateful. And um, Sheila, before I share about our Women World Leaders Voice of Truth magazine, I would like you to share about your book that you have out and how our ladies could get that book. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, it's, um, it's a book that's easy to read. Uh, it's broken down into small segments. Uh, and you can uh, I have women who use it even for their devotional time as well. But, but it's our journey. But it's the things that God taught me along the way about parenting my children. Uh, and, uh, you know, please don't read it thinking if I do this, I'll have my sons will be movie directors or my daughters will be actresses or my daughters will be, you know, remember it's their dream. If that's what God calls them to. Absolutely. Uh, but I think, I think it's a book of encouragement uh, to follow hard after God, uh, to know him and make him known is what it is. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, you can get it uh, uh, you can get it at Focus on the Family. They're my they're my distributor. The 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 actual the, the um and so you can get it on uh their their website as well. Most places that sell books, Barnes and Nobles, you know, uh, all of those. But it's Raising Up Dreamers. And it's by Sheila Irwin. Uh, and I would love for you to get a copy and read it. And then we've talked a lot about grandmothers and uh, I, and I haven't I didn't even think about it, but I've got a little ten ten. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know how many pages it is, but it's uh, it's actually a prayer guide for uh, grandmoms and moms and grandmothers to pray together. Thirty days of prayer, uh, and you can kind of sit it up somewhere, and it'll you just go in, and it tells you about different ways to pray for your your grandchildren and your and your children. You can do it together. I've got moms and grandmothers that are actually doing the thirty days together. Uh, you can you can email me, uh, and I'll t- I'll tell you how to get a copy. But it's just raising uh, dreamers ministries. It's plural ministries uh, at gmail.com and ask for a copy, and I'll I'll uh, tell you how you can get it, uh, and I'll I'll mail it out to you that way. Uh, but yeah, we've got a website. Our website is uh, Raising Dreamers Ministries, plural, uh, dot org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. So come see us. <laughs> wow. Lots of ways that they can reach out to you, Sheila. And we are just so, again, honored to have the privilege to uh, interview you today and just talk and, um, and just get to know you, Sheila. These last conversations I've had with you, you have been nothing but a blessing And I am so grateful again that you came to be part of Women World Leaders. And ladies, we are happy that you joined us today. I just want to say again, remember, we have our Voice of Truth magazine that is available to you for free. If you're in the United States, you can get the printed version and it's gorgeous. Just like Sheila said, it's like coffee table quality. So <laughs> there, you are going to want to put it out on your coffee table for everybody to pick up and read because it is filled with scriptures, encouragement and empowerment, and of course, the gospel message of Jesus in every edition. 
Ladies, if you want your free copy, all you need to do is go to womenworldleaders.com and just request your uh, copy. You can read it online digitally as well. Outside of the country, it's available every time we put out an edition. It is available uh, through our website. Again, womenworldleaders.com. Ladies, again, we are so grateful that you tuned in today and hope that you gleaned some uh, good nuggets here because I know I have. Have. And ladies, we are here every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with podcasts. And we have our teaching podcasts on Wednesday and uh, celebrating God's grace on Friday. So please, ladies, and of course, every Monday are the interviews. We are grateful, Sheila Irwin. Thank you once again for being our guest today. Ladies, all content is copyrighted and cannot be used without expressed written consent. From his heart to yours, we are Women World Leaders, and we love you. God bless you and have a great day.